Raise your hand if you like read alouds. Today I'm gonna to be sharing the read alouds that we've been reading in our homeschool. it's Jess, the Homeschool Convert. Thank you so much for tuning in. We have worked our way through a couple of chapter books. There's some that we are continuing through currently. So today I wanted to catch you up with what we've completed so far, what we have on our docket next, and what we're kind of slowly working our way through because we do tend to juggle multiple read-alouds at the same time, but I'll explain more how that works. But before I do that, let me say welcome if you are new. Like I said, I'm Jess and I started homeschooling due to the global pandemic. We are in our second year now. I never thought I would homeschool, but my family has just absolutely loved it. So here I am, the homeschool convert, and I created this YouTube channel to connect with other homeschoolers or people who are interested in homeschooling and just share my heart for it, share encouragement, share information, and uh, yeah, I just love this community here. So if you would like to join this community, go ahead and click that subscribe button. It is free, and I would love to get to know you. Go ahead and introduce yourself in the comments, but let's go ahead and get into our read-alouds. So I did share a video already talking about the read-alouds that I wanted to prioritize as far as chapter books, went and I really want to focus on getting through some classics. I don't know if it was like super clear in that video that these are books that I want to prioritize, but it's not necessarily like we will not deviate from this list. <laughs> we are going to read other things. And so, um, yeah, you'll see some things in here that weren't mentioned in this video, but if you want to see the classics that are on my like must read list, I really want to get to these, whether, whether it's this year or next year, however long it takes us, I will leave that link for you. But the first book that we completed is from that list and it is Matilda by Royal Doll. I really just wanted to do something fun with a female lead for my girls uh, to start the school year off and they loved this. Many of you in that read aloud video suggested that we listen to the audiobook, specifically the one narrated by Kate Winslet and it was brilliant. Kate Winslet is so good. <laughs> like We loved it so much. I highly recommend that if you want to read this book that you listen to the audiobook as well. Kate Winslet did a far superior job than I would have done uh, reading this to my girls and we, I, I enjoyed listening to it as well. And so uh, we definitely enjoyed this one. If you've never read Matilda before, just some content warnings. Uh, it uses the word stupid quite a bit. I typically don't like um, books that use that word a lot, quite frankly. But um, you know, every now and then I give things a pass because I don't want to not read a good book just because it uses a word that I don't find ideal. <laughs> I think that's the worst that the language gets. Other content warnings that you should be aware of that I can think of is it does briefly mention the idea of suicide as well as murder. And so, it, I mean, it's not like this huge drawn out part of the storyline. They're given all these graphic details. My girls weren't bothered by it, but just a little warning to you, always look into the content of books to see if it's something that you're personally comfortable with. I would hate for somebody to hear me say that my girls love this and then you read it with your kids and you're going, oh my gosh, like I can't believe she read this to her kids. We all have different boundaries and things that we're comfortable with. Uh, so I just wanted to be upfront with that because those were a few things that I thought were worth mentioning. But that being said, it's a super fun book. My girls loved it. Uh, everything from like my five-year-old up into my 14-year-old niece. We have four kids at home school with us, my two daughters, my niece, and then a little friend of ours from the neighborhood who's eight. And so all of them <laughs> loved it over those age ranges. And like I said, I even loved it with Kate Winslet narrating it. It was so fantastic. And then the, the next read aloud that we completed was not on my read aloud list, but it is one that has been definitely circulating through the homeschool community. That's how I found out about it. And it is The Wild Robot. And that is another one that we did by audiobook. I haven't, I don't remember anybody specifically saying to listen to the audiobook, but y'all, listen to the audiobook. Uh, the narrator for that does such a brilliant job. It was so enjoyable to listen to. Um, my girls loved the story. They are begging to read the second one, or I guess listen to the second one. Uh, what is it? The Wild Robot Escapes. And so it is currently on hold at our library or like our virtual library um, <laughs> on the Libby app. We're waiting our turn and we're going to be starting it as soon as we get it because they are just like bursting at the seams to listen to the second book. Um, that one, as far as content warnings go, it talks about death um, as far as like robots dying, but then also like some forest animals and things like that. So if you have kids that are sensitive to that, that's something to be aware of. Um, there is some mild violence at the end, uh, not with humans, but with like robots. <laughs> but, um, all in all, so much of this story is so wholesome and I love that it's like a robot but in nature and 
just the juxtaposition of those things created these just really, really sweet storylines. Uh, my girls loved it so much. I think that's probably one of their favorite read-alouds that we have ever done. I think they will remember this book for a long time. I don't have anything to show you because <laughs> I didn't purchase it and we only listened to it. I didn't have the physical book. But um, if you have been on the fence about the Wild Robots, I, I would definitely recommend it. I, we really enjoyed it. So the next thing that I want to talk about that we completed was another thing not on the list, but that we incorporated as part of a unit study. But since it was like a read aloud chapter book, I did want to mention it. And it is uh, Stage Fright on a Summer Night by the, the Magic Treehouse series, Mary Pope Osborne. And so we had actually never read a Magic Treehouse book together, but we are learning about Shakespeare right now. Uh, during like once a week for our morning basket. We don't really do it in the morning, but that's what's called <laughs> in homeschool circles. Anyway, our enrichment time, if you will. So before we started really reading Shakespeare's plays, I wanted to learn more about Shakespeare and who he was and why he's important. And so this was a fun little add on to that. And um, we got through this faster than I intended to. I intended to kind of like really take our time through it, just do one chapter per lesson. And every time I would read it, the girls just wanted another chapter and wanted another chapter. So um, this was definitely a fun one. I was a theater kid myself, so. Uh, <laughs> I like getting to do that kind of stuff with my kids now. And so those are the chapter books that we have completed. The next one we're going to be working on is Old Mother Westwind. And so I just wanted something kind of short. I feel like we can get through this before I can check out uh, The Wild Robot before it becomes available to us again. I think I'm next in line. So this is only, let's see, 79 pages. So I think I can get through this um, before we get to that. So this will be our fill-in, although I'm not reading it just because it's short. Uh, it's by Thornton Burgess, and so uh, Thornton Burgess is well loved in our family. I think his stories are so sweet. So this is next on our list. And let me talk about, I have a few things in front of me that are we, we are still working our way through. So the first of which is The Courage of Sarah Noble. And it's another super short book, so you may be wondering, well, what's taking so long? <laughs> uh, we are doing a Charlotte Mason simple study with this. And so um, it's essentially these very simple lessons. I read a chapter from the book. There's a corresponding coloring sheet or kids can draw if you want to. I think technically for older students, um, it's recommended to do like a illustrated narration or whatever that's called <laughs> where they listen and they can write they can draw a picture that goes along with it or they can write something we're just keeping it super super gentle i feel like we have plenty of other opportunities to do that kind of stuff so they just work on the coloring sheets that come in it while i read the chapter there's usually some questions and then there are some other picture books you can check out if you want to um, and read those alongside it. Sometimes there's Bible verses that go alongside it. And uh, we're also learning the Beatitudes in that study. So it's a very simply laid out unit study-ish <laughs> type of thing. Um, but we have been enjoying The Courage of Sarah Noble. We don't have that much longer in it. Uh, let's see, we're on chapter, we'll be reading chapter nine next. And there are 11 chapters. So we only have three lessons left in this, so we'll be done with this soon. But my girls have definitely been enjoying The Courage of Sarah Noble. And the other thing we've been working through is a Carrie Dillingham Among the Pond People. So this is her complete Among the People series. It has all of her Among the Various Things fill in blank. <laughs> and so it has Among the Forest People, Among the Farmyard People, Among the Meadow People, people Among the Pond People, and Among the Night People. And so we are currently working our way through Among the Pond People. Um, we're doing it alongside our nature study that we're currently doing. But it's definitely, they're, they're read aloud. So it's not like a, like a chapter book where things like there's a storyline that follows a linear linear fashion. Um, for Among the Palm People, at least, we haven't read the other ones yet. Uh, it's like, there's different stories <laughs> built into it. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> but um, we are slowly working our way through the stories in Among the Pond People as we do our nature study because our nature study that we are currently doing is by Gentle and Classical Press and it is um, Gentle Classical Nature. and the unit that we have, we don't have the whole year's worth, but the unit that we have that I got as part of a bundle is the pond unit. And so um, that was one of the recommended books to do with it. So we're doing that as a read aloud. And the next thing that we're working through, this bookmark is in the wrong place, <laughs> is how to be a good creature. 
And the reason the bookmark is in the wrong place is because I realized my library also had this as audiobook to borrow. So we've been listening to it um, that way. My niece was following along in the car with the words, but she hasn't done that in a while. So <laughs> the bookmark is like, I think we're like maybe halfway through and it's like the bookmark is like toward the beginning. So it's been a while since she's done that. Um, this is not necessarily a book that was written specifically for children, but I've talked about Cy Montgomery before. She's the author of this book. This is her memoir. It's her experience with 13 different animals and it is just such a sweet wholesome book so far. Um, it does talk about hard life things occasionally but the, uh, essentially the premise of this book is how her animal friends have taught her valuable life lessons and I have animal loving kids and so they are just eating it up. My intention was to take like the whole semester to get through this and just listen like once a week, or I guess not quite the whole semester, there's 13 chapters plus introduction, so like 14-ish weeks or something like that. Um, that's not happening. <laughs> I started off that way, and now when I turn it on, of course, with the next chapter, again, we tend to listen to it in the car, do it as part, part of our car schooling, if you will. So um, I think we will complete this relatively soon. There's also a children's picture book that Cy Montgomery wrote called Becoming a Good Creature that I've mentioned previously, I've shared in hauls. And we read that the first week too, just kind of, it's kind of like a primer, if you will, to this. It takes these 13 animals and condenses them into one very sweet picture book. So I'll leave both of them linked because maybe your kids, you don't feel like are quite ready for this. Definitely get the picture book. <laughs> we love that but um yeah even though this isn't necessarily written for kids like there's periodic illustrations and things like this in here and so it's, it's definitely not like too adulty if that makes sense it's something that children can appreciate especially if you have animal lovers so if you have animal loving kids this might be one to look into hey friends i wanted to pause here because since filming this video my family has finished reading this book and there were some important things that I wanted to mention. So for the most part, the book is child friendly enough. Like I said, every now and then there are heavier themes, but there is one chapter in particular that addresses really heavy themes of depression and suicidal thoughts. And so in the context of this book, I feel like if you really wanted to read it, you could just skip that chapter and maybe just summarize that because of what had happened in the previous chapter, the author was feeling very sad, and so now we're going to move on and see what happens after that sadness type of thing. Uh, again, as I said already in this video, everybody has different boundaries with their kids and what they're comfortable talking about and what they're ready to introduce them to. And so uh, this is definitely one that if you were interested in, you definitely, definitely want to pre-read and use the judgment based on what you think is best for your kids. But even if you don't ever read it for your kids, I... 100% recommend this for adults because I just love Cy Montgomery's perspective and how she's learned from these animals in her life. And so anyway, let's get back to regular programming. And then the last thing I want to mention is um, this 50 True Stories of Daring Women of God, Courageous World Changers by Shirley Ray Redmond. And I'll probably mention this again when I finally get around to sharing our morning basket. Um, we... Like I said, we don't do our morning basket in the morning, it's typically in the afternoon, but also some of our morning basket stuff we do as part of like car schooling uh, because we do have some drives for our extracurricular activities. And so this is one of the things that we pick up when we're doing that and my niece reads out loud. And so we love reading biographies of people and I just feel like there's been so many just courageous and important and noteworthy people <laughs> in the world that it's important to learn about. I think it's especially something like this where it's courageous world changers and they're daring women of God. I think that these are like such great examples for my children to look up to. Sometimes they'll read about one and they want to learn more about them. And so that kind of like provokes rabbit, rabbit trails or whatnot. But um Essentially, you just have these one page biographies with a picture and so it's very easy for my niece to read two or three of these out loud in the car and we can talk about them and talk about their contributions and what made these people important. So we have been working our way through this and like I said, I'll probably share this again in Morning Basket, but um, obviously we'll work our way through this one and then we have other ones we'll work our way through so I'll probably also include them <laughs> in these read aloud videos because they are read alouds technically. So anyway, that is where we are at currently. Um, 
I would love to know what you have read so far, what you have really enjoyed, what you are looking forward to reading. Let me know in the comments. But that is everything I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would love if you gave it a thumbs up. But other than that, I hope you are having a blessed day. And until I see you in the next one, the Lord bless you and keep you. Bye guys.